Welcome, everybody, back to Friar Talk. Today, we got some breaking news. Mike Schilt has been hired as the Padres manager. Now, it was kind of, and it kind of came down, it felt like to two candidates, it was going to either be him or Benji Gill. They ended up going with the guy that has more experience, um, probably, I would say, a safer hire if you want to go that route. Uh, we liked Benji Gill as well. We, we liked those two. We didn't really want some of the other candidates. Um, we also kind of liked Ron Washington. He's gone. He's on the Angels now. Um, but overall, I mean, we expected Mike Schilt to get hired. Like when this, when um, the Bob Melvin news came out, we titled our video like Schilt's probably the, ne the next guy. Like that's what we fully expected to happen. Fast forward, like, I don't know, like about a month later. And that's what they end up doing. It is kind of weird that it took so long. I guess they were looking around to see if there was anyone they liked more, but overall they, they opt to go with Schilt. They opt to go in house. Um, he's been a senior advisor for the Padres the last two seasons. He's kind of been directing the farm, doing stuff like that, which if you want to look on a bright side about this, I mean, the Padres farm system got kind of completely depleted and now it's widely viewed as like a top 10 farm again, which is pretty insane when you consider all the trades that the Padres had in 2022. So Chase, what are your thoughts on this move, man? What, what do you think? You like the overall direction with going with Mike Schilt? Do you feel like it's kind of too redundant with Bob Melvin? What's your, what's your takeaway from this one? Well, I like it a lot better than if they were going to hire Ryan Flaherty. I know he was one of the top candidates. And, you know, it's kind of going away from the, hey, you know, let's, let's go with the that and like a couple of the clubhouse guys like. Schultz's been with the team. He knows the farm system. So it's not really a huge adjustment period for him. I would have liked Benji Gill a little bit more just because of the Latino presence that we have on the team. I feel like he may have been able to relate and just kind of get the team going a little bit better than Schilt has. But Schilt has experience. He's got a lot of experience dealing with star players when he was on the Cardinals. So I think, honestly, you're, you couldn't have gone wrong with either or. Um, especially since Schilt, you know, he's been with the Padres the past year. He's an in-house hire. He knows the farm. He knows what players can do. It's an ear adjustment for Schilt. Um, now let's just see if Preller manages to take a step back. You know, you have an experienced manager. He's been with him. He's been in the organization for the past two years. Let's see him run it. I mean, let's see how the team responds. Let's see how everything goes. But honestly, it's a really solid hire. That was kind of that was kind of my thought as well with just the overall like if you would have gone with Benji Gill it could it could have been a banger hire it could have been sweet it could have been like it was definitely like a bigger swing though where and I feel like we've seen this like it's probably a lot worse to miss on a manager like badly than to have like Jace Tingler than to have like a manager that's like a, oh this guy's an amazing manager like we know you know what you're gonna get out of Schilt so. Maybe the reason it took so long is because they were really considering Gil. Like that might be the case, which I like that they actually like did their due diligence. If that's what kind of went down, I mean, obviously we don't know like what's going on behind closed doors. Um, also, the Peter Seidler stuff probably slowed this down a ton. Um, but I mean, outside of like kind of that, like in the in the move, like I feel like it makes a lot of sense. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a ton that we should expect to be changed for the Padres. I think one thing that is interesting that I think I definitely want to see more like, like moving on from Bob Melvin is that I, I do think that Bob Melvin struggled to manage the pitching staff. That was, that was always our biggest critique of him. Now for being honest with ourselves, we can't just solely blame Bob because he didn't always have a lot to work with. Like in the bullpen this year, they, they didn't have a lot to work with. The guys were struggling. So people get mad when he would make certain pitching changes. And it's like, guys, you're going to get mad either way because of who the options are. So I think we saw some of that. Um, but I also think in the, in the 22 playoffs, like Bob Melvin went to back to Clev and went back to Mania too much. And I think that's what burned him. And then of course they had the Robert Suarez thing, which I didn't really blame him too much. Like I felt like they were probably going to leave Suarez in could have gone with hater probably hindsight that that was the correct move, but there were some question marks like that. So I think if I'm looking for something like what I want to see out of out of Mike Schilt that I didn't see from Bob Melvin, that's where it comes from. Um, I a lot of people didn't really think that Bob Melvin was a good leader and stuff like that. I, I disagree. I thought he was. I thought that it was just like they were losing. Like that's what when when they're when you're losing, like that's always like what people go and like try to look for. 
um, and to try to just kind of like find excuses and like ways to cope with what, what's going on. Um, but overall, in terms of decision making, that is something that I want to see Mike Schultz do a better job of. Now, lineups. I think we saw that Bob Melvin kind of decided to go with a pretty consistent lineup base where Jace Tingler didn't do that. Jace Tingler's lineups will be the different every single day. So I feel like like Mike Schilt is more in kind of the, the old school mentality of like, all right, this dude is our two hitter. He's going to be our two hitter. We change it up once in a while. There's slight adjustments, but you know, this guy's going to hit five and six and he's going to consistently hit five and six. It's going to be very rare where he doesn't. And then you kind of play with it. Like the Padres did last year with, with ha Sung Kim, where it was like, okay, he's balling. Let's move in the lead off. He did great lead off. And like you, you adjust throughout, but you don't just change it every single day where a guy's hitting first then he's hitting third then he's hitting fifth, you know, like we don't get to see that. So I don't think we're going to expect that from Mike Schilt either. Um, but overall, that's kind of what I'm looking for out of, out of this hiring out of Mike Schilt himself. But it seems like as the guy, as a baseball mind, he's very adequate, very, very smart dude. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right there. But Chase, any other thoughts on on the Mike Schilt hire? You're muted, Chase. <laughs> yeah, I, I I saw the little notification. Oh well, so you basically nailed it. Um, there's a couple things like where hopefully the players react better to Schilt than they did to Melvin, I guess, at the end of last year. You can kind of really see towards the last 10, 15 games where it looks like Melvin just sort of lost the clubhouse, lost the players. Like I remember the, the whole hater thing, you know, when he was asking, well, did you talk to him? And he goes, well, it is what it is. Like we can't, have those circumstances if we want to be a winning team the whole team needs to be connected together yes you can have disagreements on whether or not you're going to come out for a third day in a row and stuff but to consistently be having to deal with that and kind of just wearing down you as a manager you can't sort of you can't have that so hopefully you know Schilt does a really good job at managing you know those stars and all the personalities in there um hopefully you know, we get a little bit more analytics because I know that was the one thing Bob Melvin wished there was more of on the Padres when he first got here. He, we were sort of lacking in the analytics department. I think we still are compared to other teams. Hopefully, Schilt can also bring in a couple more just individual coaches for pitching, hitting, and maybe fielding. Just bulk up the coaching staff in general. When you look at other teams, it's like, okay, cool, they have – six hitting coaches and six pitching coaches and we have one hitting coach like well now we have two and then one pitching coach for the entire starters and bullpen that's a lot of work for one person and you can't really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one and fixing mechanics or tweaking pitches pitch uh grips you know swing mechanics it's a lot for one person to dissect a lot of slow-mo of each individual guy and having multiple people kind of eases the load and one allows you to work as a team and get more eyes on a lot of different angles. So outside of that, I think that's the only other weakness that the Padres do have. And if you put those two things together and they click, we could be in for something really special. But I honestly think Schultz great. Hopefully it works out because it can't be on your – what. Uh, after Schilt, if Schilt doesn't work out, how many managers there would this be now? Five, six? Can't have that. Can't have that. No, yeah, it's interesting. And I, I like that you bring up the coaching stuff because that's not even like a, a Schilt discussion, but it is when you're talking about the Padres coaching staff. And, dude, how many times – Chase, this is what? This is going to be, I think, our fourth season covering the Padres. And I think every single offseason, every single year – we pound the table for the same thing. Can you guys please hire some more coaches? You put all this money into the into the staff, yet we see the you know the Rays come out here with a sixty million dollar payroll, and they're in the playoffs every single year. Why? Because their coaching staff, their their the way that they build their farm, the way that their you know their front office works is just they put so much money into that. They don't even put money into their into their players. You got to have the balance of the two, and when you do have the balance of the two, your organization looks like the Braves or the Dodgers, but. The Padres operate like the Angels. That's what the Angels' problem has been. That's always what the Angels' problem has been. That's why you don't see them reach high expectations. And they had, you know, a World Series, what, like 20 years ago? 
well, the Padres have like one playoff run. Like that's, that is the issue. So, you know, we're going to, and I don't really care if we keep bringing it up, dude, we're going to keep bringing it up because that is the issue. That is the biggest issue. And, and even with this hire, like we're talking about like, Hey, we like this hire, you know, if you do certain things, this will look a lot better. And, and I think you're hundred percent right. Because if they end up doing that, like it will look a lot better. You will see drastic changes. You won't see everyone have a career down here. Cause that's the stuff that causes that. And dude, you hear the players talk about it. They're like, yeah, like we don't like, we don't really get enough like work and stuff. And like Manny will come out and be like, like we have enough, like these guys are doing the best they can, but that's just because Manny's face of the team. Like, what do you think he's going to say? You think he's going to come out there and be like, yeah, we don't, we don't have what we need. Like Manny's not going to do that. That's just not his role. So you, you see it, like you see little like comments and stuff and you realize what's going on. But I, I, I like that you bring that up because that is drastically important. And, I don't care if we pound the tables a hundred more times for more coaches. We we probably bring it up in about every single live stream we do too. Um, but it's it needs to just keep being reiterated because until it actually that we actually see changes, that's gonna be the biggest problem. And that's gonna be why if it doesn't work out, Chase, guess what? There's gonna be the same things that were said about Bob Melvin about Mike Schilt. And it's gonna be like, dude, there's not much, not much we can do there. So I think that's overall pretty good takeaway though on on what this hire means, what it's for, um, and that's kind of where what we want to see out of the rest of the Padres coaching staff and kind of the adjustments and whatnot made. So uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff. The Padres made a minor trade, um, kind of a, a reliever sw- swap with Scott Barlow. So we're going to have an episode out on that, and we'll have a few more out the rest of this week. You know, free agency is starting to kick off. Aaron Nola just got signed, um, so we'll we're going to start seeing some guys get signed. So we had an episode last week about Blake Snell. Um, Obviously we haven't really been posting that much. So our YouTube algorithm doesn't really want to push stuff out yet. But if you didn't see that, go check that out because I think it's, it was Isaac and I, and we were talking about Blake Snell and like the chances of him actually coming back because that's a real rumor right now. And and that is a possibility, but we'll kind of see what's going on with that. But I think that's kind of where we're at off season wise. We're going to keep going through guys that we like. And if there's anyone you want us to discuss, any potential guys either on the Padres that you want us to talk about or in free agency, let us know and we'll break those guys down. But thank you all for listening and we'll talk to you all soon.